<laughs> we'll be doing something a little bit different this time. Instead of going through a level, we're going to cover a handful of the mini games that we've bypassed thus far. But there's so many stories in this game that I still have to show off one of the stories in this bonus video. And it's going to be Warthog's story. It's now driven by Colonel Hall, and like all previous drivers of Warthog, he's a loyal and dedicated military man. His current mission is to win Twisted Metal so that he can wish for the ultimate weapon. Then he'll use it to take out all the evildoers of the world, because we know that's exactly what the US military would do if they had the ultimate weapon. Now on to the minigames. This is the one found in Big Blue Stadium. It's a demolition derby to destroy all the taxicabs. What they neglect to mention, although heavily imply, is that we cannot use any weapons. We have to inflict all of our damage by ramming the taxis. So you learn the mechanics of ramming in this game pretty quickly this way. If you drive full speed into a mostly stationary opponent, you'll deal the most damage while taking the least yourself. And if they're moving or heading towards you, you'll take more damage and they'll take less. Every single impact will do at least a little bit of damage to both vehicles involved though. So if you're playing as a car that doesn't have very high armor, you actually cannot complete this minigame. You will explode before the enemies have run out of health. Even when I did this as Sweet Tooth, who has pretty high armor, I could barely win the War of Attrition. I had to ram all the vehicles perfectly. Most of the time I would run out of health first and die. As Warthog, it is actually pretty easy. You can see in the top left, I have my current record of just under two minutes. If you take longer than five minutes to kill all the taxis, all you get from this is a health refill. You pretty much just wasted your time. If you do it in under five minutes, you get to keep all the pickups that you might have collected along the way. You may see weapons randomly spawn here and there. Any of those will transfer into the main game, so long as I do this in under five minutes, which I obviously will. And in fact, I will do it in under three minutes, which gets you the top prize of an extra life for the main level. So you can have a full health refill, a giant stockade of weapons, and three lives with which to complete Big Blue Stadium, the easiest level in the game. This is the one minigame that doesn't actually unlock anything, just makes the main level easier, and that assumes you're in a vehicle that can actually complete it. But you do get to see a cool flippin' taxi, you won't see that anywhere else in the game. Minigames were a thing these developers first did in War of the Monsters, but in that game you would spend in-game currency just to be able to play the minigame, and then that was it. Your prize was getting to play the minigame. Didn't unlock anything. So this implementation is arguably a little better, although that's kind of controversial. Some people hate these things. Like, imagine you found this one and then you tried to play through it and found out your vehicle literally could not complete it. So you switched to a different vehicle, tried it again, eventually got through it, and all you got was an extra life. No unlockable at all. You'd be pretty frustrated. All future minigames do unlock something though, although many of them are much harder than this one, so that's not necessarily a good thing. On to the minigame for the LA level. Every single level has its own minigame, except for the boss levels, which are just deathmatch versions of main game levels, so they don't really count. This one takes the form of an obstacle course, as we'll see many of the others do as well. We have a time limit of two minutes to get the top prize, four minutes to get any prize at all. We have limited turbo, unlike the last minigame. Still can't use weapon attacks, but we do have access to our machine gun, which I do not realize at the moment. Make use of that later on. The slalom part of the game's title refers to the fact that we're supposed to weave in and out of these toxic barrels, otherwise we take a little bit of damage. But then I figured out I can use the machine gun and take him out safely before I get anywhere near him. This is the difficult part. And I just got past the difficult parts. These Wrecking Balls will instantly kill you if you touch them, but only the first few can reach this outside fence. 
So once you get over there and past maybe the second or third one, you are completely safe. It's still a very stressful segment, especially when they don't line up as nicely as they did there. But it's important to take your time with it, because the two minute time limit is actually very, very generous. Even with an extremely slow vehicle like Warthog, you have plenty of time. So just stop until the uh, nearest threat passes you by, then quickly dodge past it, repeat the process, you'll get to the finish line in plenty of time. 20 seconds to spare with our ridiculously slow vehicle. No problem at all. My first time through I had a real hard time with this game, kept trying to rush through the wrecking ball section assuming I might not have enough time to complete it otherwise. But then I eventually figured out just take it easy, you'll get there. They give us a rundown of all the items we get to take to the main level, but we're obviously not doing that. We're moving on to the Paris minigame. This one is completely different. We have to launch napalm strikes at helicopters. Every time we do one, a bridge will fall out of nowhere and allow us to get to the next one. The time limit here is a minute and a half, and it can actually be very difficult to get under that limit. You have as many napalms as you need, but there is a lag time every time you miss. So a lot of wasted seconds in this challenge of timing and depth perception. Each time you get to a new helicopter, you'll want to watch it cycle through its pattern a few times to know where best to try and strike at it. Even if you come in here having memorized all the patterns, the execution itself is difficult enough that uh, you might still fall short of that uh, time limit. See, I really thought that would have hit, but instead I got the much harder shot. That brings us to the final chopper, which does figure eights around the Eiffel Tower. Which means there's never a point where it slows down and is particularly vulnerable, so you just gotta pick a spot and hope for the best. Which managed to work out this time. Got it done in plenty of time, but that took a fair amount of practice. That unlocks our first deathmatch level which is just the reflecting pool section of the main Paris level. Not the section I would have chosen. But now we are skipping way ahead to the Greece minigame. Because the Egypt level is an alternate, the Russia level is an alternate, and the Roman Ruins level is not completable by Warthog. So we'll see those when we do the second batch of minigames. This is another obstacle course, this one testing our jump skills. The moving platforms are on a global cycle, so they can really be anywhere when you enter this uh, minigame. This can lead to a lot of wasted time and frustration, where you have to wait for the platforms to do a full cycle before you can use them. But if you're patient, you can still get through because the two minute time limit is way more than you need once again. Even still, I found this minigame to be intensely frustrating, just because it is impossible to sight read. Every single jump, there's just no way to know what the right way to do it is until you just take a blind leap and hope you got it right. So it takes tons of trial and error, wasted time from bad cycles. Right there, I took a gigantic risk for no reason. Didn't save any time at all. And if I had clipped the corner of the platform, I would have just fallen and died. That's the last time we have to worry about a uh, bad platform cycle, because we don't have to jump anymore. The end of the minigame is by far the easiest part. You just gotta ride a few fun merry-go-rounds. The very last obstacle doesn't even have any threat of death associated with it, just wastes a bit of your time if you get it a bit wrong. Which, as noted, we have plenty of time. Once you've died enough times to memorize the route through this area, you should be able to get to the finish line pretty consistently. Getting here the first time unlocks the deathmatch for Greece. And with that we can move along to our final minigame of this video, for the Monaco level. This one is a death race, we have to survive two laps with no time limit. Along the way, should we destroy ten of the other racers here, We'll get a bonus, that'll be the Crimson Fury unlock. And if we kill 15 racers, we get a second bonus. It's the only minigame with two potential prizes. 
The second bonus is just an extra life though, like the one from Big Blue Stadium. Nothing too exciting. And no, you cannot get up to four total lives because your max life count always reverts to two upon completing a level. Kind of a waste. But one of the gimmicks of this minigame is as we drive the wrong way down this course, we cannot slow down. I'm not even touching the accelerator right now, I'm just automatically boosting forever. If we run into any of the other racers, we will take one third of our life bar. And I've already hit two. I've got a full lap to go. All we have to defend ourselves is infinite fire missiles, but they have no homing at the moment. We can only fire them in a straight line. The safest thing to do is to hug this outside wall. If you do that though, you won't get the 15 kills that you need. You'll probably only get uh, 4 or 5, because that's how many racers will take this far outside track. So you gotta occasionally swerve in and out. It's actually more difficult if you have a faster vehicle. I found this actually pretty easy to do with Warthog but I've done it with much faster cars and had a nightmare of a time with it. Even still, kind of a close call. I've only got the one hit left. And I'm right at the finish line. Got a couple of real close calls. A uh, driver ran right out of the goalpost, almost directly into me. And then another one would crash into me if the race went on another millisecond. But instead, I got my Crimson Fury, and I get an extra life. So that's the last of the mini games I wanted to show off. We'll see the remaining ones after we complete the final level of the game. But we still gotta show off Warthog's gameplay without all the weird criteria piled on. Just for a little bit. Here's a deactivated minigame teleporter. After you complete a minigame, you can no longer replay that minigame. Even if you did not get the prizes. If you fail the minigame, then you can go right back in and try again. But if you complete it, you better make sure you got the prizes you wanted. Also, if you redo a minigame after you've already unlocked all the prizes, and you meet the criteria for those prizes, you will instead be told one of the game's cheat codes. So that's a neat way to learn those, I guess, if you don't want to look them up. But you can use the cheat codes either way, they are not themselves unlockable. Anyway, I'm mostly here to show off Warthog's special. I used it once, it's the Patriot missiles that he's had since the first game. Just a cluster of three missiles, colored red, white, and blue. It was one of the most interesting specials in Twisted Metal 1, but it is long overdue for an update. And it's sort of got one, in the form of the special weapon upgrade that I just picked up. You'll notice when I have the special selected, there's a tiny panel that opens up on top of the vehicle. You better believe that's a change from the PSP version where that exact same panel also telescopes out of the vehicle very slightly. It's a little more interesting, but not interesting enough to show off, I don't think. And our upgraded special just allows you to charge it up. Then the missiles that it fires are considerably larger, and they're all red instead of red, white, and blue. Uncharged missiles do 6 damage apiece, the charged ones do 9 apiece. Pretty boring, just like the special itself. But Warthog is a very reliable vehicle. It can certainly finish things off, especially with the third life and all the bonus weapons that I got for completing the minigame. And now that Colonel Hall has earned me plenty of prizes, it's time that he received his own, I guess. Congratulations, Colonel. The United States military must be very proud of you. I should think so! All my training, all my skills, and all my mental preparation made it an easy victory! Yes, well, since you are this year's winner, you may wish for absolutely anything. Calypso, there's one thing in this world that just turns my stomach! It makes me want to puke just by thinking about it! Dare I ask? I'm talking about the scum of the earth! 
The Safe Earth Foundation? No, I'm talking about all the evildoers out there! Drug lords who go around forcing their bile and swill on our nation's youth! First they arm them, then the kids kill each other! It's a terrible circle that needs to be chopped off at the neck! So your wish is... Sir, my wish is for a weapon of ultimate power! I want a tool that will help me eradicate villains of this world! Granted. <laughs> this is my ultimate weapon? Hmm, good point. God, Colonel Hall's voice actor made R. Lee Ermey sound cool-headed and restrained by comparison. And there's probably a thoughtful commentary to this ending about how the military can't kill its way into good deeds no matter how many Halo guns they have. Maybe even something about how accepting aid from the very people that it condemns has been a massive failure time and time again. Or perhaps I'm just reading a bit too far into things and the message is just Calypso bad. Either way, we'll be returning to our regularly scheduled gimmick-free battles next time.